see. They will be having a reader's workshop. And a reader's workshop is a time where readers can really practice skills and strategies that we need to have as lifelong readers. Um, so we're really giving them real life experiences in that workshop. Our workshop is structured so it has a mini lesson at the beginning, which is usually about five to 10 minutes long and focuses on one specific skill or strategy. Um, then the students have between 15 and 20 minutes daily to practice that skill or strategy in the independent reading section, or we call that read to self. Um, there is also a read to someone time, which is the partner reading, and that will be about for 20 minutes daily. And we like to wrap up the workshop with a, a share session. And that's a really good time for students to share their learning with each other and for us to celebrate learning. Um, throughout the workshop, the students are going to be flexibly grouped in guided reading groups or in strategy groups so we can help personalize the instruction for everybody and meet everybody's needs. Research shows that the best way for students to become better readers is to be reading good fit or instructional level books as much as possible. That's what this read to self time really provides for students. It provides that time for them to self-select books and for them to practice the skills and strategies that they've learned in the mini lesson in their own books. Students will each have their own book bin and they each get to pick books out of our classroom libraries and put them in their book bin based on interest as well as instructional level for them. Then, like I said, they have this time to practice reading the books, applying their skills and strategies, practicing those skills and strategies. During this read to self time, the teachers are going around and having individual reading conferences with the students, and the teachers are focusing on the specific need that that student has. So once again, we're personalizing instruction in the read to self type. When students read to someone, it's a really important time for them to get together and share their success with another partner. It's also their time to read the books that interest them on a daily basis. Um, they practice their fluency, think and talk about books together, and it increases reading involvement, attention, and collaboration. Here they will also learn the different ways to read together, whether it's I read one page, you read the next, whether they take a picture walk, or it's retelling the story together. For the word work, it is, um, the guided word work is teacher led and it's phonics based. We also do the technology, which this week we introduced um, Starfall, which is a phonics website that has all sorts of different levels from beginner all the way to advanced, where students have a chance to succeed on their own level. We also do the independent work, which focuses on the high frequency word in the word families. Here's a great thing because the phonics that they do is based on student readiness. So they are not gonna be pushed and pushed and pushed to where they cannot meet the capabilities of what they wanna learn. Students are here to learn at their own pace and their own readiness. We also flexibly group our phonics groups to where students need to be. It's not one classroom full of 28 kids learning the same thing. We may break them down into three separate groups. Share time is really important for our students to celebrate their success of reading. They talk about what did I learn? What did I read about? Did I use what I learned in the mini lesson? What strategies did I use and what questions do I have? Children also here get a chance to learn from one another and we think that's really important because when you're working side by side with a partner or a friend, I think it makes learning more important and successful. Writer's Workshop is part of our literacy block instruction. Writer's Workshop will be administered basically in small groups every other day for about 30 minutes. That's just the heart of the actual instruction time. There'll be other opportunities throughout the day, throughout the curriculum for them to be practicing their writing, but for actual instruction time, it'll be 30 minutes. We'll be working in the Learning Lounge. I don't know if at Open House you had a chance to look in it. It's closed right now. We'll have to open it up a little bit later. And it's right across from my classroom and Mrs. Manthe's classroom. It's just a little room that was used last year for meetings, but now we've turned it into a fabulous learning space with a smart board and some great technology to enhance our learning. 
Writer's workshop, the way it's set up, like most workshop models, there's a first a mini lesson, and then there's independent time and independent writing. They'll have their writing folders, and they'll be keeping their writing pages in the writing folders for quite some time until we've finished and, and got them ready to publish. Once they're published, we'll ha probably have an author's celebration of some sort, and then send home their work. We'll probably save one just to put up on the wall somewhere, but you'll get the packet then of their work that they've been working in their folders for, for about a month. And then at the end of our actual writer's workshop time together, so we have our mini lesson, we have our independent writing. During that independent writing, there's conferences within those small groups. And then at the end, there's hopefully time for share time. Thank you. During our 80-minute math workshop block each day, students will first experience a whole group mini lesson on a current skill and focus, then three rotations, and finally a sharing time where students can share their mathematical strategies and ideas and learn from each other. During rotations, teachers will be pulling small groups of students that need to be working on the same particular skill. This is the math check sheet students will be working with each week to keep track of their choices during rotation. Each student, each day, will participate in math to self activities as well as computer math. Other than that, the last choice they may choose, math with someone, writing about math, or problem solving. Our math workshop rotations will begin with math with someone, which involves workstation bins in our classroom. These bins have in them games that are related to our current learning targets. Math by self, students are working alone on math. These include independent activities also related to our learning targets. Computer math, students will be working on IXL each day. And when they write about math in their math journals, they're writing about the mathematical strategies and ideas they've tried. For Flex Week grouping, it is an awesome way to get away from the stigma of all oh, my kids in the low group, my kids in the medium group, and the high group. As teachers, families, and staff, we really wanted to get away from those labels of low, medium, and high. And so for flexibly grouping, it provides a way for us to personalize the learning to the students, and the students can learn at their readiness level. So wherever they're at on that specific concept that we're teaching, that's how we'll group them. Um, we, it's able to focus on every student's learning at what's just right for them. So it doesn't matter if we are teaching number sense or problem solving. If they're at one readiness level for one thing, they'll be in that group. And if they're in a different readiness level for our problem solving, they'll go to that group. We use the analogy for flexible grouping with running. So if you're a beginner runner, if you're running with a marathon runner, you're going to get frustrated and you won't want to continue because you'll just give up. You don't want to be running with someone who's faster than you. It's also the same with a marathon runner. If you're a marathon runner and you have that experience, you don't want to be running with a beginner runner because you're going to get frustrated and you're going to give up and you won't be challenged at your readiness level. And our 5K runner is a mix of both, where if you're with a beginner or a marathon runner, you might get frustrated because you think something is not at your readiness level, but you're not being challenged enough. So our 5K runner is somebody who is a mix of both, and they can learn at their just right level. The first grade teachers from last year did tr do this with reading and math, and this is some of the success that we did see last year. We started in November, and we saw a lot of success, and like I said, behind me you'll see the data, but the success we saw was not just in the hard data. We also saw a very high level of student engagement. Just like Dee Dee was talking about, it wasn't just that all students were learning the same thing. Students were learning what they were ready for at that time. Students were learning what they needed at that time. So every student was engaged because every student could feel successful. Students were very involved in their learning because they were feeling successful. They were feeling like they could try it. They were feeling like they could push themselves because they had you know, really felt success. And they also felt very enthusiastic about it. They really enjoyed going to the different classrooms. They enjoyed seeing the different teachers and being with different students every day based on you know, their need for that day. We also saw that the teachers were able to 
um, really become experts in what they were teaching with those students. The value in behind having teachers become experts is then it allows for the teacher to be able to differentiate on the spot and they can really provide that personalized learning right there on the spot. Um, but for the data you can see behind me, in the fall, this is for math, math in the fall, for first grade last year, our students had an average of 166.3, which was in the 77th percentile throughout the nation. The score was their RIT score, which is the score they get from math. In the spring, our score grew and our mean score was a 189.3, which, which was in the 99th percentile for the nation. That meant that 80% of our students met their growth targets. We were also very excited to see that only 5% of first grade students were in the risk category. Um, our flexibly grouping in math workshop, as a team, we're assessing students' readiness levels through daily observations on their workstation work, on their independent work, on their writing work, whatever their rotation that they're doing, and we're walking around and assessing in our guided math groups that we're watching what they're doing when they're are working with us. Um, those students will be pre-tested on each concept and grouped based upon the results of the pre-test. The students are provided instruction at their just right level so again they can feel success at their readiness level and they will also be challenged if they are ready for that next concept. The students will be post-tested at the end of our instruction and the growth will be shared with families and the students so they can see how well they did on that certain um, skill. This is an example of a pretest that um, our team has used. It's a progression of questions, so it will start with an easier question and it'll slowly progress through harder questions. So students, all students can feel success on the test and when they get frustrated at their level, they can stop and that's a good notification for us as teachers where we can group them. So stu all students can feel success with the easiest questions, medium questions, and then if they can, they can go on to the harder questions. So it's a nice progression for us to see where the kids are at for their readiness level. The MAP test is a computer-based assessment that all of the students in the Waukesha District take three times a year in the fall, the winter, and the spring. The MAP portion of the MAP test is comprised of six different strands, which you'll see on the left side of the screen. Students are placed in ranges in each of those strands based upon their performance on the math test. I've placed student A and student B at two different ranges within the number sense strand to show you the difference in instruction that is needed for these two students. Student A, who scored in the RIT range of 151 to 160, needs to work on things like counting forwards by one, twos, and fives, counting backwards by ones, and one-to-one -one correspondence. On the other hand, student B, who scored in the RIT range of 191 to 200 on the number sense strand, needs to work on fractions and expanded notation. As you can see, instruction for these two students looks very different, which is why we chose to take advantage of flexibly grouping our students to provide a personalized learning environment. We have also chose, in addition to um, specializing for reading and math, to specialize in STEAM. Teaching science this year will be Mrs. Manthe and Mrs. Zafrin. Teaching EIE will be myself and Mrs. Kale. And teaching social studies will be Mrs. Goki and Mrs. Konechka. Here is the correlation chart of our science and our engineering curriculum. We use FOSS science as our um, science curriculum and engineering as elementary as our engineering curriculum. For trimester one, our science curriculum is new plants coupled by designing a plant package in engineering. In trimester two, solids and liquids with a Play-Doh process in engineering. And tr um, trimester three, air and weather coupled with catching the wind, designing and creating windmills in engineering. For social studies, we will focus on communities throughout the entire year, but we will kind of break it down to three separate types of community. You can see behind me, um, they'll be studying my school community in the first trimester, my home community in the second trimester, and then my community of Waukesha in the third trimester. Throughout each of these trimesters, the units will focus on teaching the students about needs and wants, goods and services, community helpers, citizen, citizenship, decision making, and we'll talk about each of those pieces in each of those different types of communities. The students will participate in some exciting project-based learning opportunities as well as some big events um, to 
kind of kick off our My Community of Waukesha, we will have a career panel where the students will be able to interview different career helpers, different community helpers, and last year we had up to 80 people and the students got to go around and talk to lots of different people and it was a great experience. They will learn about their community of Waukesha. We will go on a tour of Waukesha field trip where they learn about the different places in Waukesha, the things you might need and want in a community. And then as a culminating experience, they will use their knowledge and apply that to create a community of their own. They will have to decide the needs and the wants of that community, um, the goods and services coming in and out, and they will get to design the buildings and design the road signs. So it's a really neat experience for the kids. Also part of social studies will be choice time workshop. It is also a workshop model, so there will be a mini lesson that focuses on 21st century skills, such as collaboration, working, communication, working with teams. Um, also there will be content area connections throughout our curriculum brought in through this workshop model. During the independent work time, students will have choices between exploring with blocks, art, drama, computer, and our classroom library. At the end, we'll have some time to share. Thank you. Students complete design briefs during STEAM time that ask them to use the background knowledge in the areas we are studying to complete challenges. In these challenges are criteria that students have to try to accomplish in their designs. Through these experiences, students utilize the engineering design process wheel. Students um, continually to revolve around this forever revolving wheel as they plan, build, and improve their designs. Here's an example of a design brief to give you an idea. This is our junk boat design brief. Every design brief starts with I can statements for what the students need to be held accountable for. And then the challenge. This challenge was to design a boat that will stay upright and float across a bin of water with only wind power. It then follows with the criteria, for example, it had to use at least four materials, and it had to be able to travel across the length of the water. And then a materials list, as well as a tools list that are at their disposal. So when the students start moving for STEAM, it's going to be keeping them together with their homerooms. We are specializing, like we said, and they will be going to different teachers for their social studies, for their engineering, and for their science. The, your student will be kept together with his or her homeroom. They will just be visiting the different teachers. They will have three weeks with each teacher, learning each one of those pieces before switching to the next teacher. They will visit every teacher each trimester. So each trimester they will see the science teacher, they will see the engineering teacher, they will also see the social studies teacher. Once again, this allows for teachers to become experts in their field and once again provide differentiation on the spot to continue to personalize the learning for every student. All right, homework. We want you guys to encourage your students to read for a minimum of 15 minutes per day. Students will, in their B binder, have their book in their bag, which is in the Velcro um, spot, and that one is going to be based on their level. So that's a really important one that you want to make sure you pull out each day and read over with your child, because as they move up levels, they can take those books home and practice. Also another really important time is once a week your child will be visiting the librarian and they will have a chance to get the books that maybe aren't at their level but something that they can take home and you can read with them. Maybe it's a book that really interests them. Also a really important website is IXL. It's a math website that we really encourage students to also spend 15 minutes a night on. Again, that's a level where they can progress as they are you know, doing better or if they need to go down. The 100 day project, those sheets are due tomorrow. It is the pre-plan, we sent it home about two weeks ago. We have extras in our classrooms tonight if you need them. We really want to encourage you that this is a student-led project. It is also gonna be presented in February, so you have from now until February to be working on it. So if it's something that you wanna take 10 minutes every night and work on with your student, we really encourage that. Class Jojo is the classroom management system we have chosen to use. It is up on our smart board in each class. All of the teachers have access to each one of our classes. 
It awards a student for points whenever we catch them following the tribal agreements. And students may lose a point if they are not following tribal agreements. It's actually quite motivating for students. Last year they had a lot of success and already this year we've had a lot of success. It helps point out the great role models or silently point out the behavior that we're not encouraging. Um, students do start over every day and I know each teacher does it a little differently but um, we all keep track of the points and we try to celebrate the success of getting positive points each day. Thank you again for coming. This is the end of this part of the night. The next part of the night is from 6 to 6.30 in your child's homeroom class for some question and answer sessions. Thank you.